Hi, today I will show you how I reverse engineered this clip. When you need to 3D print a replacement part for a missing or broken one, you have four options. Find the part on Thingiverse or other side, use CAD program to draw it from scratch, sculpt it in 3D or 3D scan the object. I do not have access to 3D scanner and haven't tried a lot of 3D scanning options and the one I've tested yield poor results and there is a lot of manual repairing the object to do afterwards. My 3D modeling skills are poor, so what's left is to use CAD program, in my case Fusion 360, to recreate the part. But in this case it is tricky because this clip has almost no straight faces or edges to reference from. This is how I tried to recreate the part. I need to take photos of this side, this side and this side. The things we are going to need is a piece of paper, probably in a nice color, uh, external light source, the object we are going to copy, a little bit of play-doh and a ruler and a, some kind of photo device. Now I will make a photo, trying to <coughs> keep my camera as parallel to the object as I can. Okay, the next side. After taking the pictures, it is time to switch to Fusion 360. Insert the canvas, select the picture, next scale it. As you can see on the picture, I put the ruler, but it was very inaccurate, so I just used dimension taken directly from the part using electronic calipers. Next, I created a polyline around the edge of the part, trying to be as accurate and precise as possible. Then extrude the first face. The second phase is more tricky. After inserting the canvas and scaling it, it is time to properly align it with our extruded body. Then draw the polyline around the image, add extra rectangle around the shape and use outer part of the sketch to cut through our body. The third face is made the same way as the second one. It is a little tricky to place the image correctly.
and as you can see the end result is not perfect. I think it is because how the pictures were taken. You will need really to stay as parallel with your camera to the object and the object itself has to be placed perfectly square. The first print was a test one using black PLA to check if the part fits. It has a really rough surface finish, but the most important dimensions look okay. So I printed another version and changed the orientation to more vertical one so it was printed like that and of obviously added some supports. This time the surface finish is really nice. For the final part I used Fiberlogy Natural PP filament. It was my first time with polypropylene, no idea how it would work. These are the manufacturer recommendations, nozzle temp 220 to 250, heat bed temp 0 to 80. In order to make adhesion better use some packing tape. And it, printing in enclosure is not mandatory, cooling between 0 and 25%, print speed 35 mm per second, retraction enabled and raft is recommended also. In my opinion the safe starting point was 235 degrees on the nozzle, 80 on the heat bed, 20% cooling, print speed all, maximum 35 retraction set and added obviously a brim. I've used 0.2mm lay height and 2 perimeters. Other settings are based on Prusa Slicer default verbatim PP profile. Also I added a packing tape to the sheet plate and wrap it around the edges to the bottom so it won't peel off during the printing. And as you can see the print went flawlessly. I guess it was a beginner's luck because polypropylene is supposed to be hard to print but for me it worked the first time. Anyway, polypropylene seems to be a little bit too flexible for this application, but I will give it a try anyway. And as you can see the end part is really nice, the surface finish is really great. The part seems to be strong, this part here is a really weak point, but I think it should be good enough. The only downside is that now I have to clean my steel sheet because there is a lot of glue left from the packing tape. By the way, this clip is for cut cargo carrier. Let me know in the comments if you know any other method to recreate such a tricky part.